Hello and welcome to the Marin Sanitary Service virtual tour. My name is Casey Fritz and I'm the Schools and Community Recycling Coordinator for Marin Sanitary Service. And I'm going to walk you through just a little bit of our virtual tour today. Um, and I encourage you to uh, log on yourself and experience the virtual tour um, in its full length. So before we get started, I just wanna make sure you can um, access the virtual tour. So this is our website and under the education section and tours. We'll see this page and the virtual tour section. There's um, a pre-lesson that you can watch before the tour um, for a couple different age groups here, as well as a self-guided tour document in English and Spanish. This is the link for the tour itself. And then you can also see that we have a post-tour survey, which will only take about three minutes and will give us really valuable insight into what you think of the tour. So let's get started. Um, this is the opening page of the tour. You can just click in with that arrow there and it'll bring you to the tour itself. Um, so this is our Marin Recycling Center. So you can always see where you are over here on this menu. Um, so you can see that the Marin Recycling Center is highlighted and that's the automatic starting point for the tour. Um, so the Marin Recycling Center is where we process all of the recyclables that we pick up in our trucks. Um, and we have them separated out both with machines and humans in order to make sure that they can be clean enough to be sold and recycled into something else. Um, so you'll notice that throughout the tour, there's little tour cards. This one pops up automatically, but throughout the rest of the tour, there's gonna be a little eye that we wanna look for um, to click into an information stop um, so we can learn more about what we're looking at. Um, and again, I encourage you to look at the tour yourself. You'll notice the little arrows on the ground here um, that can help you navigate, or you can just scroll back and forth to get different views of the machines and things like that. Um, but to get us started, I'll just play this little video here, which gives an overview of the Marin Recycling Center. All right, so that video gave a nice little overview of what we're going to see in the recycling center. And we're gonna scroll up to this menu here and start at the first part, which is the blue cart um, paper uh, and cardboard before it is sorted. So we'll click in here and the next images will load. And again, we can always pivot and take a look around. Um, but we'll also notice that there's the two blue eyes that indicate some information is waiting for us. Um, so this video here explains why we have two different types of recycling or a dual stream recycling system. So dual is two. Um, so we have two streams of recycling. Um, as you can see in this pile here, we have a lot of paper and cardboard. That's one type of recycling. And we also have bottle and can recycling, which is kept separate. Um, so we want to keep those things separated so our paper and cardboard doesn't get really wet and dirty because um, that makes it hard to recycle into new paper. So that's why we have a dual stream system. Um, and again, you can click in here and watch this video on why we have dual stream recycling. So does separating your recyclables truly make a difference? And do they actually stay separated? Our split body trucks are state of the art. The separating panels in the hopper are what make them truly unique and they're designed to keep your materials separated in their respective compartments. At the processing facility, the separated paper and containers remain apart during the entire sorting and baling process. 
in order for your material to ultimately be recycled, we have to ensure there is no contamination or a properly mixed material in the final deliverables. Remember, containers in the brown and cardboard and paper in the blue. Join us in keeping your materials separate. So that video gives a nice overview of how we keep your materials separate and why. Again, we're trying to make sure that our paper and cardboard stay nice and clean so they can be turned into more paper and cardboard. Okay, so we have another information stop over here. Um, and this information here just sort of goes over the fact that we do have trucks that are split in half um, and can keep the paper and cardboard separate from the bottles and cans. So what happens is the trucks will back in just right here um, into this facility and drop off in this big pile. And then the um, tractor that you can see in the back is going to come and scoop up a bunch of the material like he has right here and load it onto a system of conveyor belts so it can go to be sorted. So we're also going to watch this video. So as you can see, like I said, the truck is uh, dropping off just the one half of his truck, uh, and then the tractor comes and scoops up that material, makes it into a nice easy pile, and then we'll load it onto the sorting lines. So the other thing that I will draw your attention to um, is that we have our baling machine in the back here. Um, sort of scooting out some new recycling bales. Um, this is what a bale of recycling looks like. This is a paper bale. And then if we scooch a little further, we can see what the cardboard bales look like. But a bale is essentially a big cube of recycling. So these are separated paper and cardboard compared to the stuff that was just dropped off. And this separated stuff is now ready to be sold um, and can be turned into new paper and cardboard. All right, so like I said, this is only one half of our recycling. So we wanna go to the other half, which is the bottle and can recycling. So we have this big building here that contains the bottle and can recycling. I know it's a little blurry right now, but hopefully that'll um, sharpen up in just a second. Um, but this bottle and can recycling, I will say, gets very contaminated. Contamination um, is a mistake or something that doesn't belong in the recycling. Um, and because we accept plastic in this side, we get a lot of mistakes because people think they can recycle any type of plastic that they have. That's really not the case. Um, in the brown recycling for your plastics, we just want bottles, jugs, and tubs. So a bottle would be like a water bottle or a soda bottle. A jug is like a jug of laundry detergent or milk and a tub is a tub of butter or a tub of yogurt. We'll also take things like glass bottles and soda cans in here as well. Um, but again, I see many more mistakes in this type of recycling than in the paper and cardboard recycling. So we'll watch a drop off video for this one too. You'll see that this is the other half of the truck opening um, and the truck pulling forward to allow that material to come out. And again, we have a tractor that will come and make a nice neat pile. Um, and then we have, you can see all of the recycling there. Um, that tractor again will move the recycling um, from this pile into a system of conveyor belts. All right, so now we're going to go inside the Marin Recycling Center and see what it looks like when we're actually sorting. So these are up on our sorting machines and these are our two paper lines down here. And then over in this section is a cardboard line. So what has happened already is this machine in the back called a star screen has had paper and cardboard roll onto it. And for a star screen, you can picture like a bunch of rotating metal stars next to each other. And they're far enough apart that the paper can fall through, but not the cardboard. So the cardboard rolls over the top, and then the paper ends up on these lines, and the cardboard ends up on here. And then what we do when we're on these lines is we pull off mistakes. That's called a negative sort because we're removing things that don't belong there. So if somehow a piece of plastic got in here or maybe even a piece of cardboard got in with the paper, we pull that off. And if it's recyclable, we'll put it with the right type of recycling. If it's unrecyclable, we'll put it in the trash. But that's what these guys are doing. They're looking for things that don't belong there. So we also have a video here that we can watch of what that looks like. Thank you. 
right, so that was a time lapse of our paper sorting process. Um, but in real time, it still is quite fast. And um, I hope you noticed that there was quite a large volume of paper as well um, coming through. So it's a really fast paced job and can get really difficult if there are a lot of mistakes. Um, so these guys have a difficult job and we want to make sure we don't make it any harder by putting the wrong thing in the recycling. Um, so that's why it's important to make sure we're recycling the right stuff. So that's just one half of our recycling um, sorting process. We also have the other type of recycling, our bottles and cans, as we can remember. So this is our plastics line. And at this point, we've already passed a magnet over our bottle and can recycling, and the magnet will pick up any metals that have iron in them. So they'll respond to the magnet and they'll be pulled off by the magnet. We also have what's called an eddy current, which is a special current that we use on aluminum because aluminum isn't magnetic. It has no iron in it. So we have to make sure we get the aluminum off somehow. Um, we also put it through what's called a density separator, which is basically a big rotating drum. And because glass is really heavy, when we allow it to rotate in that drum, it falls out the bottom while the lighter things like the plastic um, continue through. So on this line, we're only sorting plastic. And what we're doing is a positive sort. So over on the paper lines, which we just looked at, we were doing a negative sort or pulling off mistakes. On the plastic lines, we're doing a positive sort. So we're only looking for what we know is recyclable. Okay, so we can click on this little information stop. And this is basically what I just talked about. Um, but we can see in this video how we're only pulling off the things that we know are recyclable, like the bottles, jugs, and tubs. So you'll see that they're tossing things over the side um, into big cages that have the different materials in them. So each person might be looking for a different type of plastic or material. Um, say they're looking only for bottles like in this um, cage right here or only for colorful jugs like laundry detergent jugs and then they'll flow through the conveyor belts um, like you can see right now to that bailing machine that we talked about earlier where it gets squished into a bale um, which is ready to be sold as recycling. All right so we've been up on our machines now we're going to go back down to glass recycling to see what that looks like. So this is our big glass pile, and we can have some information here if you'd like to read that um, while I'm talking, but I'm gonna say essentially what the information stop says. Um, so we have our big glass pile here. Like I said, it was density separated out because it's really, really heavy. Um, and we leave it in this pile because we can't make a bale out of it. If we squished it, it would just keep breaking. So we have a truck come pick it up just from here. And what they'll do is they'll drive it to the East Bay um, to our glass processor where they can melt it down and turn it into new glass. Um, so glass can actually be back on the shelf as another bottle or jar in as little as 30 days. And it's also infinitely recyclable. So that means when we recycle it, it doesn't lose quality and we can keep recycling it, which is pretty cool. All right. So our glass recycling stop was pretty short. Now we're going to move on to our PET um, bottles and aluminum can bales. <clears throat> So you can see on the left here um, are plastic bottles. They've all been squished together. And this recycling stop is going to tell you uh, mostly about what happens when the bottles get recycled. Um, so again, you can come into the tour yourself and read that um, at your own pace if you would like. But I'll talk about right now um, what we do with the plastic bottles. So we'll put them all together. Like you saw, they were positively sorted and then baled here. And then generally plastic um, is downcycled instead of recycled. So downcycling means turning something recyclable, like a plastic water bottle, into something unrecyclable. So a plastic water bottle might actually become a stretchy part of your clothing. Um, if you're wearing like yoga pants or um, jeans that have a little stretch in them, that's actually due to plastic. Um, so these water bottles will become part of your clothing, could come become part of your clothing. 
um, but you're not going to throw your clothing in a recycling bin. Uh, so once it has been recycled one time, that's kind of the end of the line. That's why it's called downcycling. We don't get to use it many, many times. Um, and recycling our plastic water bottles doesn't actually reduce the need for more plastic to make new plastic water bottles because we're turning it into clothes instead. On the other hand, our beautiful aluminum here is infinitely recyclable. So we can recycle it over and over and over again forever. And because it's infinitely recyclable, we're actually still using 75% of all of the aluminum we've ever produced, um, which is really cool. So an aluminum can, when it's recycled, can be back on the shelf in as little as six to eight weeks. Um, so this is a highly recyclable material. Again, we get to use it over and over and over again, which is great compared to plastic being recycled usually only once, if at all. All right, so we're gonna keep moving and look at our other bales that we have. So on the left here, you can see our clear, what's called HDPE plastic. Um, so you'll notice that we referred to um, the bales that we were just at as number one PET plastic. Um, so PET is polyethylene terephthalate, and that's just the big fancy name for what type of plastic they use to make the water bottle. Um, so this is HDPE or high density polyethylene. Again, that's a different kind of plastic. Um, in general, it's a bit sturdier than the PET. So the PET is good in fiber because it's nice and flexible. Um, hence why it ends up in a lot of fabric. But high density polyethylene is good um, for like making playground equipment or toys or something else like that. So um, there's the clear HDPE and there's also the colorful HDPE. So you can see those two different um, silos that we have inside the recycling center. And the reason that we have two different bales is plas plastic actually keeps its color when it's reprocessed. So um, when you mix all this stuff together, generally you're gonna get a black plastic because you've mixed all these colors together. Um, but on this side, you can keep a clear colored plastic. So if someone wanted to keep you know, their uh, orange laundry detergent, the same exact color orange, they would have to only find those orange colored bottles because plastic is keeping its color when it's reprocessed. All right, so you can see that that is the end of our first list in the Marin Recycling Center. Um, and I would encourage you to go in through the tour yourself because there's a lot more to see. As you can see, our CRV Buyback Center is also part of the Marin Recycling Center. Um, there's document shredding, our collection trucks, the transfer station where we have all of our trash. Um, and you can peek inside the transfer station as well and see what it really looks like when we reprocess your trash. Um, there's the indoor dump, which I'm sure many of you have visited before to drop off different materials, concrete recycling, hazardous waste, our ranch where we have our animals. Uh, so there's really a lot to see in this tour. And I hope that walking through a little bit with me today um, gave you a better idea of what we're doing in the Recycling Center um, and encourages you to learn more by exploring the virtual tour for yourself. Um, so please feel free to let me know if you have any questions. Um, my email is in the self-guided tour document. So again, thank you um, for watching this tour and I hope that you enjoy exploring for yourself.